if my avatar is small enough that if I sit in the chair normal, um, you can barely see me over the table. So we're just going to have to... I suppose I could make myself like a high chair. Maybe I'll try to do that for Christmas. Give myself a little present. <laughs> it's very funny, Neary. Let's see. Okay, well, it is 2.01. Uh, that is start time in my book. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming. Happy October. It's October. Happy October. Hopefully everybody had a good September. It has been unseasonably warm here where I am, which is kind of nice. A little late summer. Uh, for those of you that are new, welcome. This is the web user group. Um, I am Reed Linden. I am the product manager in charge of the front end web team and their output. So if you have any complaints about how the web works, guess what? It's usually my fault. Come and talk to me. Uh, and this is your opportunity to do so. Um, some, the only ground rule we have is that, unfortunately, I probably can't answer anything that isn't about the website itself and the way the web works. Uh, feel free to ask that question, but please understand if I say, you know, hey, so sorry, uh, it's out of my out of my jurisdiction. It's not that I don't want to answer, it's just usually that I don't actually know the answer to those questions. And sometimes when I think I do, it turns out I'm really wrong, um, and other teams get mad at me. So I just try to stay away from them altogether. That being said... Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So usually the way with this works is we start out with um, some updates on what we've been doing for the last month and um, you know a little bit of preview about what we want to do next month uh, or you know just kind of generally in the future. Uh, I have given out some homework um, and frequently do that this uh, month. If you remember correctly, we were all supposed to think about uh, what you would want to see in terms of new user experience. Um, it's kind of a, a thing that we've been discussing at the lab for, well, really forever, but we've been discussing it a lot uh, lately in terms of trying to kind of think about how we would improve the new user experience. Um, and I'm <laughs> you know, curious what, uh, what y'all have to say. So... I think that's it. And then, uh, yeah, I usually reserve kind of the last half um, for questions and answers. Uh, I think, I suspect that this month we might actually do a little bit more of that. Uh, we went over last time. Um, so I think last time I didn't give you all enough time. So I want to give you more time uh, this month. So I'm going to try and go fast uh, if that's possible. We'll see. I like to talk. So maybe not. Um, but so moving right along, are there any questions before I get started about the format? I like the micro machine guy. If you, if you grew up in the, in the eighties in the U S you might know what I'm talking about. Those micro machines commercials with the guy that spoke super, super fast. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pantera knows what I'm talking about. Uh, okay, I'm going to assume that there are no serious questions, so let's just move along. Um, in terms of what we've done in the last month, um, there's a couple of things that, that I can talk about, uh, a couple of things that I actually can't talk about too much. Um, that are kind of a surprise, uh, but I can tease them, which is fun. Um, the the marketplace uh, search update that we've been talking about forever is actually in the final stage of of development now. So I would actually expect that to go out. We're kind of hoping next week, 
um, but it might be, you know, you know how things go. Uh, it might be a little bit later, but hopefully we'll see an announcement for that next week. Uh, and that, just a, as a reminder, is kind of similar to what we did with the in-world search um, and just improving the functionality and improving the kind of the elastic search infrastructure in the background um, for for Marketplace. So, you know, a lot of the things that y'all have been looking for, you know, exact matches and, you know, better sorting and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, just better search per, uh, search functions. So that's a big deal for us because it means that building from that, we can start putting in, you know, filters and sorts, and it'll help, uh, you know, kind of make the the upcoming um, uh, variance work uh, that we're working on, so that uh, that we've been talking about even, you know, even more, even more better, even more better. Good stuff. Uh, so we're very close on that. Um, also, I've mentioned before that we're revamping our land journey. Um, so that's kind of the land portal that I was talking about, uh, where, you know, from there, you'll be able to go to buying a private region or, you know, getting your Linden home or maybe renting from another region owner and also, you know, just kind of owning extra mainland. Uh, all of that will be in one place. And we have been creating the kind of the portal for that, like that one place that we're going to host all that. And in the process of doing that, what we've been creating is a design system, um, which means that when we go forward, um, you know, after we've created this, we can build all of the other web pages faster using this modular design system. So the fun part about this for y'all is that it kind of gives you a preview of what we want secondlife.com and all of its various properties to look like going forward and how we want it to behave. Um, so, you know, kind of a, uh, a bit of a preview of like what we think it'll, you know, what we think we'll, we'll kind of do going forward. Right. So if you look at secondlife.com now and, and particularly, you know, the account management pages and some of those others, I mean, they look like they were built in 2005 because they were built in 2005. Um, and um, that means that A, it doesn't look exactly the way we like it to look and doesn't necessarily function exactly the way we like to function, but it's also really hard to maintain it. Um, so we're trying to kind of build from, from scratch an easily maintainable, easily upgradable, well-functioning, um, you know, kind of modern infrastructure website for the first time ever. <laughs> Uh, so everybody get out your pom-poms and cheer secondlife.com for entering into the 21st century. It's going to be fun. Right? Thank you, Neri. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, the other thing that, that I am kind of, uh, super excited about is, you know, we, we've been talking, um, you know, with regards to premium plus rollout, uh, this summer, you know, how in order to make that happen, we had to teach everything that premium was not just a binary, uh, a binary system, right? So it wasn't just, you were either basic or you were premium and there was nothing else in between. Um, and once we taught everything that it could be multiple levels of premium, that opened the door for us to start creating multiple levels of premium subscriptions, right? So, you know, kind of be more, more generalized in some senses, but also more, um, more specialized. And, you know, like Lucy, for example, has been asking for an a la carte version. I also want an a la carte version. So, um, given that, uh, that, um, premium plus has worked so well for us, we have started experimenting with new premium levels, new subscription levels. Um, the first one outside of premium plus should be available this year. Um, we're actually getting pretty close on it. Uh, it is not specifically a premium a la carte, uh, Lucy, but it moves us in that direction, uh, which I love. Um, and I want to keep moving in that direction. So um, I would expect to see an announcement for explicitly what it is that we're, we're putting out pretty soon here, um, probably next month, uh, or maybe even this month, kind of depending on, on how much we can line up our assets. At the moment, we're still 
working on things like naming and marketing and you know all of that uh all of that good stuff putting all of that in the you know in the works but for the infrastructure the actual engineering we're we're way ahead of schedule so i'm hoping that once the the design and the ux and the and the naming kind of comes together we can move super fast uh so yeah really hoping to be able to announce that soon um and just kind of a tease here that that's just the first potentially the first of many um and potentially even on the road to kind of an a la carte uh, scenario so the more we do this the better we're going to get at doing it um, and that's really that's kind of what i want to keep doing i want to keep you know iterating on this and um you know gathering feedback and, and measuring success uh and using data to kind of push us in a direction that um you know allows us to offer you know the most possible benefit to y'all so yeah so good stuff moving that direction um let's see uh lucy okay so i'm i'm going back here uh lucy says any levels between premium and premium plus puts an a la carte at risk uh it's not actually between premium and premium plus it's kind of more of a side side version um which is really where i want to i want to focus uh is kind of offering more more options as opposed to this one's more expensive this one's less expensive you know that kind of thing um so kind of democratizing if you will um rather than just offering kind of the the same thing but you know various levels of it uh i can't talk about pricing right now lucy i can't i'm sorry yep stay tuned uh let's see here moving back a little bit further uh Jub Jub asks, is Linden Lab going to manage renting from another? Uh, Jub Jub, no. Um, what we want to do is actually make it more, um, more obvious how to go do that and potentially give people a forum to, uh, you know, to kind of highlight their own rentals or, you know, just kind of make it, make it easier, particularly for newer residents. You know, again, everything kind of goes back to the new user experience uh, to understand how to get involved in owning and and get you know taking advantage of land here in Second Life. So, like the complete land ownership journey, one aspect of which is renting from other people. Uh, renting from us is just called owning mainland. Uh, we don't we're not involved in kind of managing the rentals for other people, and we're not not expecting to become that way. Uh, going back, Neri asks, is there anything I can say about the acquisition and integration of Casper Tech? Um, not really. So that kind of falls in that category of not really my circus, not really my monkeys. Uh, and anything that I say is probably going to be wrong. Um, so other than to confirm that, yes, we have acquired Casper Tech. Uh, and um, I believe Casper is helping us with that um, specifically. So... There should be no interruption in service, uh, and we're super excited about the possibilities that that, that gives us. Um, and you know, kind of more generally, this is a direction that that we're kind of pursuing. Is you know, like, hey, if if something's working, don't don't break it. Uh, try and support it. Uh, so this was our effort to support Casper Tech. Uh, and then I'm back to Rick Rollings. Okay, so I think I've caught up. Do, 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 do. Ah, okay, so Chris is asking, are there any plans to make a marketplace interface more like a DAS 3D style to allow larger images? I haven't looked at, I haven't, <coughs> looked at Daz's marketplace in a very long time. Uh, I will, so my answer to this is gonna be very generalized um, and not specific because like I say, I don't, I don't have the context for it. Um, but yeah, something like larger images um, is certainly possible. Uh, I 
don't think that I've seen you here recently. So just, you know, so you understand. Um, what I'm hoping to do is actually kind of rebuild the marketplace in uh, 2023, kind of from the ground up. We've talked about that in this space before. Um, so any any suggestions like that one is is super helpful. Uh, kind of help me gauge, you know, what what is it that would be useful for you? You know, what would you find value in? Um, you know, where are the current pain points? What are, you know, new features that you might like to see? Uh, so larger images, uh, definitely. And I'll go check out uh, Daz's Marketplace. Uh, Neri asks, uh, maybe that's not an ask. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't really have, like I say, I don't really have much to say about the Casper stuff. Uh, Hope asks, will the variants work on Marketplace improve or change the way demos are set, seen, and managed to? The answer to that, Hope, is yes. Yeah. Um, my, my vision for uh, demos is for it to just be, you know, kind of a type of variant linked to the main product. Yeah, you're welcome. Can anyone legally sell their SL business to another? Oh, Chris, man, uh, the moment you ask legally, I'm out. I have no idea. I'm not a lawyer. Refuse to speculate. Good question, but... Pfft. <laughs> I, I'm not even going to try and answer. It's just going to get me in trouble. Cool, Pete. Hey, thanks for bringing up um, New Year's or experience. So uh, that was the other thing that I kind of wanted to talk about. Um, no, Chris, don't stop coming to the meetings. Keep coming to the meetings. I don't mind you asking the questions. I'm just going to let you know that I can't answer them. Um, so new user experience, new user experience, who did their homework? Only Pete. Let's talk about them. What would you like to see? What, what do you think the pain points are? How would you solve them? Um, is there any low hanging fruit? Is there a silver bullet? Uh, you know, we've, we've tried to fix this a million times in the last 19 years and, um, you know, I'm happy to sit here and tell you that we keep getting it wrong. So, help. What do you think? I'm here for your suggestions. Which I should say, Pete, uh, a getting started section on the dashboard that points to LL approved YouTube video. Um, yes, 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 yes. I like that idea. We used to have, um, Torley would make those videos for us. And I'm sure a lot of the videos that Torley made are probably still relevant. Um, many of them probably aren't, uh, but we could go through, I, I think we still own those videos, but yeah, putting them in a, you know, an easy to find place that's kind of, you know, right up front for the new user rather than have to go search them out, uh, makes a lot of sense. Neary, yeah. So, you know, start with a proper character creator. It's funny that you say that. We're actually kind of working on exactly that. Uh, so I'm really glad that you said that because it, it kind of validates one of the directions that, that we're investigating right now. Um, it's, not, it's not my team, so I can't speak exactly as to how that'll be implemented and what it looks like and what their timelines are. I really don't know. Um, but you know, just kind of water cooler type scuttlebutt. Uh, I know they're working on that kind of a new user avatar creator and kind of that avatar experience. I know that one of the challenges that they have, um, is, you know, the fact that all of our 
I mean, 99% of our content is user generated, right? Which means that there's no like f specific format. Um, it's kind of a bit willy nilly. Uh, so I know they're kind of working on how to address that, but that's kind of all I really know. Ah, Spidey coming in with good, um, good info. If you want to add more Spidey, please do. Uh, I don't really have much more to add uh, that I can share right now, other than to say I've looked at it, and my team has looked at it, and it's coming along nicely, and I think that you will be pleased. There you go. Straight from the cat's mouth. Oh, that's interesting. An over-the-shoulder camera. To, uh, so you kind of get that. Is it like an isometric view, or is it kind of more like a um third person kind of shooter experience view yeah okay that's cool is that something that you bought like did you is that just a camera setting that you've yeah okay debug settings well, that could certainly be something that we could put a little bit more front and center. Um, I mean, if our camera already does that, we could just have a, a linked setting that says, hey, would you like an over-the-shoulder view? Ding. I like that idea. I think it's a good suggestion. I like it a lot. Oh, Chip Jeb, I like that. Um, so just like permanently set to daytime, not on the cycle. That's super low hanging fruit. We could make that change today. Uh, out of curiosity, so. Can you expand more on why you think that's uh, useful? I mean, I have an idea. I can make a guess, but I'd like to hear it from you. Yeah, Jeb Jeb, you. What was your suggestion? Why do you think that would make an impact on the new user experience? Fair enough. Okay, that's kind of what I figured, but I wasn't sure if there was more to it than that. Yeah, Pete, that's that that is ding 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 ding. Right. Gold star. Um I agree with you. That is that is like one of the giant hurdles. Um it's a it's a really tough problem to solve. Um you know, tutorials are great, uh having them in there, putting them, you know, right front and center, but you know, like tutorials take a while and you you have to watch them and then you have to play around with it and, you know, it doesn't always work and you've got to, you know, do the tutorial and maybe it's not in a language that you understand, right? Like, I, I agree with you. We have to make that easier and we have to figure out how to, you know, walk people through stuff. Um, but it's, it's just really hard. I mean, tutorials will help. I agree. Where would you put those tutorials?
you're thinking about where to put those tutorials. Um, I'm going to address some of these others here. Jeff, Jeff, so I think the idea of a limited interface is interesting for new users, but the, the only thing that, that I'm cautious about is that we've actually tried, you know, what we called the basic viewer, if I recall correctly, like way back when I first started, which was, I think, 11 years ago. Um, and if I recall correctly, it failed miserably. Um, I'm curious, does that, if you were around for it, um, and if you remember that, like, are you thinking of something different? And if so, how? For the record, very much a yes and. Like, totally agree with you. I think that one of the huge hurdles is just how how many options and how complex everything is when you first get started. It's very overwhelming. Yeah, it looks like Pantera is kind of on the same on the same level here. This is interesting. I'm so excited to hear, uh, to see people actively arguing for a basic kind of dumbed down viewer. Usually we hear exactly the opposite. Right, right. At the start. You're right. I should. Oh, I like that, Pete. Kind of put it right in the search menus, like a separate tab, just a, I mean, we'll call it something different, but like a new user tab, getting started tab type thing that is potentially searchable, but its, its actual function is to say, hey, are you new? Start here. Here's some stuff. Lucy, you say harkens to Sansar. I'm, I'm, I've missed the thread, unfortunately. What, what were you saying? Harkens to Sansar. Hmm. Minimalist UI. Yeah. I mean, so is it in your opinion that the the minimalist UI was was one of the reasons why Sansar didn't work? One of a million. Okay. Do you think it's high on that list or low? All right. Fair enough. Lou, I agree with you in, with regards to, you know, one person's easier to start viewer is another person's viewer with barriers. It, you're right. Um, I don't know that that invalidates the point, um, particularly if you give clear and easy uh, upgrade paths to, hey, are you frustrated by the, you know, by the viewer with barriers? Here, go use this one instead. It's got all the stuff. Hope I, I agree. So, you know, like the, the idea that if you look at other, let's call them our competitors, right? Uh, you know, MMOs and stuff, they all do start you in like a start zone that is impossible to escape until you've kind of completed the tutorials. 
Um, to an extent, we we try to do that uh, with the uh, with the Welcome Islands and the that kind of thing. It, I I think in our case, we're probably just not doing it as well as we could, as opposed to you know like, hey, this is a bad idea. Um, so I I want to kind of say, yeah, I think you're right, um, and I think we need to think. You know what I what I would want to hear is like how how would you do what we're currently doing better um you know on that level right so if we're if we're talking about kind of the welcome island experience um you know how how can we make that better Ooh, my battery's running low. Hopefully I don't drop. Run, run, run. Plug it in before I die. Huzzah! Neary, yeah. So you touched on a thing here, right? So you're saying, I know the manpower isn't there, but for instance, Neos VR had guides everywhere with people helping you through the very difficult interface and functions. There's there's two two things. One, absolutely, um, we have we have hard data that says that um, you know the 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 sooner you can interact with a new user the the you know, much higher chance that they're going to stick around right so you know having in person like a human being there to you know do hand holding absolutely translates to um retention so you're absolutely on the right track the other thing that you brought up is kind of this like i know the manpower isn't there right so it's kind of this pre-limiter of um you know, in a perfect world, we would have everybody, you know, like a, as soon as a new person comes in, there would be a, you know, a Linden or something that's just right there saying, hey, let me help you through the experience. Um, and like, that's totally true. We can't afford that. <laughs> like, we can't do that. But that doesn't mean that the idea is is a bad idea and that there isn't a, a kernel in there that maybe we can figure out how to afford and how to kind of do that in the right way. So what I kind of want to point out about your suggestion is, A, it's a good suggestion, you're absolutely right. Um, but B, you know, for, for the others here, like don't, don't necessarily limit just because it seems completely... Um, pie in the sky right like there's no bad ideas in a brainstorm right like you know sure um we can't afford to have greeters everywhere um but that doesn't mean that there isn't a kernel of hey is there a way that we can you know move um you know move people more quickly to a you know greeted and hosted experience So I would encourage everybody else to think big, even if it's very clear that there's no way we could maybe actually implement. Got to start somewhere. <laughs> Near, yeah. Um, that, that's exactly right. We hear that all the time, right? Like, usually people stick around because they made a connection. Careful, the fun to watch suggestion for the, the new user welcome islands it quickly turns into griefing.
Hope that's a good question. I don't know. Um, I wasn't around when we when we dumped the the um, Second Life Mentor program. I'd be curious to kind of investigate like what the what the issue was there. It could have been pff, man. It could have been anything. Uh, I can speculate, right? Like it could be too hard to manage, too hard to you know. Maybe there were complaints. I don't know. I have no idea. What's the golden metric? How did the mentor program put new users at risk? <laughs> oh, okay. I think that's a very pessimistic view. I doubt that was the case. <laughs> Neary, yeah, I, I would, I, I, if I was speculating, uh, which I'm trying very hard not to, I would imagine that that was part of it, right? Like it's, it probably became very difficult to um, oh, police the, let's call them bad actors, right? Um, But I don't know that that necessarily means that some version of a mentorship problem program can't work. It just means that it didn't. Yeah. I think it's an interesting idea to pers pursue again. I'll bring it up. Chop, chop. I'm management now. It's the best part about this conversation. Ooh, see, I know why we got rid of last names. Uh, I also know why we brought them back, because I brought them back. That's right. It was it was based on badly interpreted hard data. That's exactly right. No, you got it. Um, it there was, um, we were getting a lot of data that suggested that people were having um, like choice paralysis, like analysis paralysis.
I just came back at, uh, I don't know, but if it's the right time or the wrong time. Because <laughs> I, I can't run the meeting for Reed. <laughs> Look, I summoned him. <laughs> For the record, I blame Jub Jub. Anyway, I believe I was saying um, you were exactly right about the bad data uh, interpretation is the reason why we got rid of last names in the first place. We were seeing a lot of data that indicated that people were running into choice paralysis uh, when they had to choose what their last name was going to be uh, in the join flow. So the response to that was, cool, let's get rid of last names. Then no one has to choose that anymore, and they can just move on. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was, that was wrong. Yeah, it was just the it was the wrong interpretation of of the data we had. Oh, thank you, Miri. Let me look. Uh, Chris, I can't actually tell you whether more will be built. Um, I have no idea. That again, that's kind of outside my purview, but I can take that as a suggestion for, hey, we would like more build tools and better tools. Yeah, I agree. Um, personally, so on our list of reasons why Sansar didn't work, um, that one's high on my list, was that the build tools inside Sansar were crap. Yeah, right. So, you know, it's a chicken and egg on that one, Jub Jub, right? Was there no economy because you couldn't build things in Sansar? Was there, right? I mean, I don't know. There were a lot of reasons um, that, that it didn't didn't quite take off. Yeah, I mean, there's no cash out, but there, there wasn't going to be cash out right away, right? Like, it, there wasn't cash out immediately when Second Life got started either. Um, so, it, the, anyway, I'm, I'm not... <laughs> we shouldn't sit here and trash on Sansar all day. I have lots of feelings. Why not? Because we got other stuff to do, Lucy. Oh, yeah, like Q&A. It's 2.48, so we got 12 minutes. What do you got? I think we got some good... Good ideas for new user stuff. But please, 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 if you think of more, like, let us know, right? I mean, I'm, I'm happy to be standing up here on my soapbox and telling you I don't know how to fix it. But also, we need to fix it. Help. Agree, Jub Jub. Learn from mystery and mistakes. One of the things that I'm trying to make our company learn is we should be talking to our residents more. They have good ideas. Listing date on listing page. When are we getting it? I am opening the bug. Oh, yeah, um, next year. 
that's that's not a it's not a this year thing. Um, but yeah, that's uh, I I personally accepted that, uh, and I, it's in my list of things that I want for a new marketplace. I like that suggestion. I have made it mine. <laughs> Chris, that's that's the silver bullet, right? Um, get new users. Get more users. D yes. Agree. <laughs> Tell me how. Raven, I have such good news for you. Uh, multiple color and variations in one listings would be the best. Ha! Guess what we're doing next. Exactly that. Marketplace variances on the roadmap. Hope to have it out this year. Uh, Lucy, I don't know what SmartBots is. Bot subscription service. Can you use more words? What is a bot subscription service? Yeah, you, your constant, my, me being a constant source of disappointment for you is not news. Uh, Ifri, great question. Um, so there's a lot. Uh, yeah. Um, we're kind of looking at a lot of different stuff. Uh, I don't want to call anyone out in particular because I don't want to give the wrong impression. We're kind of picking and choosing from a lot of places. I'm sorry. It's a really good question and I wish I could answer it. Chris, uh, advertise, advertise, advertise. I, I kind of agree. I kind of don't. Um, and, and I'll tell you why. So one of the reasons why we, we used to do a lot of advertising um, and we stopped doing as much of it, largely because our new user retention funnel is really crap, right? Um, so you advertise, you advertise, you advertise, you advertise, you get a lot of people who say, oh, he, yeah, sure, let me, let me try this second life thing. Uh, and then they come in and they realize that it is hard or whatever, right? Like they bounce off for all of the reasons that new users bounce off. Um, and that actually, that hurts you more than it helps um, because then people are having this negative experience and it is reinforcing the um, kind of that narrative that, oh, you know, Second Life is a, you know, it's a dated product and, you know, or it's too hard or whatever, right? So advertise, 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 yes, 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 but after you fix the retention problem um, or make it better. Does that make sense? Um, from a business perspective, that's kind of the way we look at this. Yeah, okay. Jeb Jeb, uh, does LL recruit non SL users but gamers to test the new user experience? Um, the answer to that is yes ish. Um, so we don't do it in a like programmatic way, uh, you know, as a as a policy. Um, but we're kind of anecdotally constantly doing that because many of the people, for example, like look at our new hires. Uh, one of them's in this room. Um, you know, we we can say that they didn't know anything about SL before we hired them, and then you know say like, okay, go 
go get good at SL and then write down your experience and tell me where it was hard and that kind of thing. So we're constantly getting that, but then we're also getting feedback from, you know, normal people, non Lindens, um, you know, that kind of thing. But no, we're not doing it in a very deliberate, you know, kind of formalized way. And maybe we should. Uh, Lucy, I'm going to scroll up and try and figure out which. Well, you can ask me the question. I just wanted you to tell me more about smart bots. Just tell me what it is. I'll try and answer it. I just didn't have context to give you an answer. All right, whatever. Hope, yeah, I like, so we've, we've experimented with the idea of kind of like a hub uh, in the past and we might still have stuff like that. Um, I I still think that we can do better. Uh, I like it. Chris, that's really well stated um it is uh both the the thing that makes second life magical uh and we all firmly believe that but it's also the thing that makes second life really hard <laughs> and we also firmly believe that um so it's this it's this thing that that sets us apart and um makes it work but it's also the reason why everything is hard is the fact that you know, we don't control the content. We don't control the format. We don't, we don't try uh, to do so. Uh, means that as a result, you can't create a unified experience for literally anyone. Um, and that's, that makes things like new user tough, right? That makes things like avatar creation tough. Um, because like, this dress doesn't fit on that body, you know, right? Without a lot of, a lot of, a lot of work. And you can't ever guarantee that it will, like from our perspective, right? So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it's an interesting needle to thread. Okay, thank you. That's good info. Same people as Speedlight. Okay. See, I didn't know. Ooh, can you hear the power washers? Is it coming through on my mic? really loud here. My cats are hiding. Chup, chup, no offense taken. Um, none at all. Uh, I've got happen to agree with you. <laughs> mm. 
Raven, is Linden Lab aware of CTS wardrobe system and its capabilities with tagging and viewing inventory as image galleries? Well, um, Reed Linden isn't aware of it, but Reed Linden is also the product owner for the web as opposed to inventories and in-world stuff. So I have no idea. Uh, I would say that almost certainly someone probably is. Oh, it's web-based. We'll see. <laughs> now I just look like a fool. Well done. Um, yeah, I have no idea. Um, I, there's probably somebody that's aware of it, but I haven't heard about it. Well, thanks, Lucy. I'll go look it up. doesn't it though? Oh, it totally flies by. Um, I can stick around for like two more minutes. But... So one more question. Who's going to be quick? Ah, technical question. Okay. Reputation. Oh, no, Jeb, Jeb, don't know the answer to that one. Next. Uh, Neri, Casper Tech listings versus Marketplace listings. Any idea on that for the future? Uh, yes, um, but all of my ideas are completely theoretical. Uh, so when I tell you what I think would be fun and cool, please understand that none of that has been vetted or approved. Um, I think it would be fun for us to, uh, you know, kind of exactly like um, have, have an integration there. But I have no idea what would go into making that a reality. Um, and I, it's just something that we're going to have to investigate mostly next year. Uh, like I say, 2023 is, is, if I get my way, going to be the year of marketplace. Um, and stuff like that is totally on the list. But I have no idea what would go into making that happen. Definitely tighter integration between, you know, marketplace functionality and in-world functionality and Casper Tech and, you know, all the stuff. I want to make it better, faster, cheaper, better. Double better. Did you hear that? Double better. <laughs> the vaunted DBF. Lucy just dropping dimes. All right. Daft Punk, out. Like light bulb. And I can think of no better way to end this particular meeting than pouring one out for Daft Punk. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy your October. Uh, I will see you all in November. Um, I don't have any homework for you other than to, if you have more new user stuff, um, please bring it. Um, we'll, we'll talk about, talk about it some more and super glad that everybody's excited for variants.